Okay, all right. This is the Queen Battle of Battle for Safe Sponsor Services Incorporated here in, in uh, downtown Boston, Massachusetts. Very happy, to, uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Very happy to be here today. I'm going to go over. Uh, this is a video response and video response to Sarah Jakes Roberts preaching a message on YouTube on her YouTube platform. Video message uh, stating teaching children how to communicate. Um, I did play some uh, clips um, earlier in regards to Sarah Jakes Roberts on her video message today on Wednesday, August the 25th, 2020. And I did play some video messages. She uh, posted a video live stream on her YouTube channel, Sarah Jakes Roberts, at about 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the United States here in America. And uh, I'm on the East Coast, and she is on the West Coast. So let's go ahead. Um, I, uh, as a believer in God, uh, I am a practicing uh, Catholic. I also have been raised as a non-denominational believer. I accepted Christ into my life at five to six years old um, at a church in Texas. As a couple, I accepted God into my life um, when I was six years old. And so I had the ability as a young child to know what was going on and to accept a higher being, a higher spirit being in my life, even as a young six-year-old child. So I can relate a little bit to Sarah Jake's pastor, Sarah Jake's Roberts' message about the state of young children today. Now, understand me. I have something that's very, very, I'm going to make, I can understand her video message, but I really want to make a very, very clear, clear, discerning message to the Potter's House ministry as well as to Pastor Sarah Jakes and her ministry, as well as to the black church, as well as to the Christian church today. I want to make a very, very clear message, especially now since the invention of at home live stream video where pastors are preaching the message at church and preaching the message in a low populated, low person church. They're streaming the message at their home or in the church and they stream it to thousands and millions of people worldwide. Okay, so you have one pastor, one minister by himself streaming a message to millions and millions of people all around the world at the same time. So it's not just more than a couple hundred people or a thousand people in a one church setting. You're actually streaming, you're actually communicating your messages to millions and millions of people all around the world in just under five minutes. So I want to send out a very, very discerning message to the church right now. Now, we have a lot of young ministers coming up in the church, as well as in the Catholic Church, as well as in, in the uh, Christian non-denominational church, the Southern Baptist uh, Believers Convention, as well as in the uh, Buddhist Muslim church, whatever it is, whatever your practicing faith is, okay? You, as young people, have the ability to communicate whatever you're speaking about to means, means of people in very limited amount of time, okay? Now, when you're dealing with somebody that has a very, very high influence, they are an influencer, not just a spiritual, religious, Christian ministry, but if that person is an influencer, you have to be very careful what kind of associates or what kind of fans this influencer may have, especially when you are dealing with the church, okay? That influencer may or may not have the ability to preach their message and, and communicate it in different levels or different ways or different means to any people. Now, the same message may be communicated and may be discerned to one person, and they may have a different opinion about that message to somebody else completely different all around the world. Okay? And understand that you're not just speaking to that person when you're on the internet. You're not just speaking to that person in English. You're speaking to that person in many multi-different languages all around the world, okay? I want to make this message very clear, especially dealing with virtual live 
mess Christian messages streaming with a very person of high influence, okay? One person's fans or one minister's a believer, a member of the ministry, may have a different opinion about that message than somebody else completely differently around the world, okay? At the same time, though, you may have people around the world that are connected to each other in the same city, in the same state, in the same region, or they may know that minister or that influencer on a one-to-one -one personal basis. So you have to understand when you deal with the mega ministry, especially when T.D. Jakes was delivering his, his one of our loose messages with Juanita Bynum, uh, Paula White, all these women that were ministers in his ministry. Mr. T. J. said his version of the message, and then these women were underneath the realm of his ministry, and they gave different versions of the same message, and they developed their own ministries out of the message of T. J. You see how that works? So you have one mega minister's main message spread apart and discerned into different ministries from one person and to different people all around the world. So that one message carries on to one person, to another person, to another person. And it's not just that that one five minute sermon is actually spread out years and years and years and years and years to come. So you have to be very careful, especially if you're not just a, a social or media or fashion influencer. If you're a person or a pastor or a, a some kind of um, evangelist or you are a prophetess or you are a minister in the Christian faith, you have to be very careful because somebody may listen to your message that same day or somebody may listen to your message a couple of, couple of years later and take a very discerning message or a very discerning meaning from that one statement that you, that you made last month or a couple of years ago. So like I said before, everybody has different levels and different discernments of that same message that the minister gave. That one minister's meaning was something completely different from what somebody else took and discerned out to me. Okay, verbatim. So you have to be very, very careful about that, okay? Now, I'm going to give you guys some stats as well as some other ministers who I asked on Lucy today on the news one article about top black female ministers. So if you don't like really Sarah Jakes, there's other black female ministers out there that have just as much older, more power, more statement than, than the podcast ministry of Mr. T. Jakes. Okay? All right. So um, according to uh, some statistics online, T.D. Jakes and his ministry has a YouTube channel of over 1.43 million subscribers. Sarah Jakes Roberts has a subscriber ministry on her YouTube channel of 470,000 subscribers. Um, her church, One, a Potter's House church in L.A., has a subscribership of 597,000 uh, subscribers. On her Twitter account for Sarah Jakes Roberts, she has a Twitter account of 203.8 thousand subscribers. On her Instagram, her woman, her woman involved Instagram, she has followers of 1.8 million followers on her Instagram. Now this is completely really different. TBN, Trinity Broadcasting Network, okay, which is one of the founding TV televised ministries to help spread the message across the world and different mega ministers, ministries, mega ministers, uh, messages. Okay, TBN is a great, great broadcasting network, broadcasting TV station, okay, that gives out messages, gives out, uh, oh, we're doing food bank ministries. We are doing, um, we're going to deliver about baptisms. We're giving out uh, reports, news reports on what's going on in, in, the, in the Christian ministry, okay, in the Christian church. So TBN has been one of the biggest, if not best, ways for Christians to go out there and figure out who is the best minister, what's going on in the Christian, in the Christian industry, uh, music, minis uh, music, faith, messages, food banks, people all around the world, missions, international missions, global missions, that's TBN. So a great, great, great TV, great TV ministry. TBN. TBN, as well as Daystar. Daystar with Mike, Mark and Joni Lamb has also had a great great international televised ministry reaching out to different pastors, different singers, 
Ministries Hospital of Faith. So, TDN has over 365,000 followers on their Twitter account, on their Twitter and Instagram account. Daystar has over 128,000 members on its Instagram account. And then Daystar is also, also followed by Bible Way. Okay. So you have to think, who has more of an impact? Is it a young black preacher or is it a global, mega million, global, international TV media company? Okay. Does a media company have influence over a young, young black preacher? Who has more influence? Is it a media company or is it a Christian media company or is it a young black Christian ministry? Young black, young black woman Christian minister. Who has more of an influence? Well, unfortunately, out of today's, uh, I'm assuming this is a broadcast, out of today's young, um, uh, young people, millennial generation, unfortunately, today it is the young people that have more influence over the media and the journalists and the media culture. So you're saying a young person, maybe they're a fashion person, maybe they're a makeup person, maybe they're a gossip person, has more influence, more power, and even more control than a TV broadcaster and a TV journalist that has been in the media industry for over 20, 30, and 50 years. No matter what that person says or any kind of words that comes out of this young influencer's mouth, just because of the influence they have, as well as the number of subscribers, that young person has way more of an influence, way more control, and way more power than somebody that has been in the media industry that has been televised on international television, that has been making interviews, okay, okay, making TV interviews for more than 20, 30, and 40 years. It is very surprising how much influence the new young millennial generation have and how much control and how much money they can make very quickly than somebody that has been in the same role and the same job for under 20 and 30 years and 40, 50 years plus. So that is what's struggling right now is a lot of these TV and media companies have difficulties trying to find who do we hire, who do we look up to, where we go to for help, where we go for TV news covers, TV news topics. Who do we look for? Do we look for influencers? Or do we look for what is really going on in the world? What should our focus be as TV media people? And as you know, you'd be surprised who do people focus on. Do they focus on an influencer? Or do they focus on what is really going on in international TV media covers? Okay, so do we focus on a war? Or do we focus on what a young person, a fashion person, a gossip person, a media person, a sports athlete, a uh, person that has influence, okay? Uh, who do we focus on? What makes us happy? What makes us feel good? And so unfortunately right now, what a lot of people are looking for is what, they, what feels good, what makes them happy, instead of paying attention to what is reality and what is going on in the real world. They, they, they want to focus on something, a temporary feeling, which brings them a little bit of happiness, instead of addressing the real issues that can help them out in the long term. And so that is the issue with the black church. The black church is losing a lot of leadership and a lot of its power because they do not know how to balance with what happened in the past, with the 1950 civil rights movement, with Dr. Michael, Dr. Martin Luther King, with Smokey Carmichael, with Malcolm X, with Jesse, Jesse Jackson. Of course, we're losing and we're aging out a lot of our black leaders today of the civil rights movement as well as John Lewis who passed away last year. We're losing a lot of that leadership to lead the black church, to lead the Christian church. And now we're losing it to young people of influence, okay? Stephen Furtick, Sergey Roberts, um, big mega church ministers in Houston, uh, uh, um, uh, Houston. I mean, there's ministries all over, but they're full of young people, okay? Which if you have a good, great, Feel the message about 20, 30 minutes. You preach a really good message, a 20, 30 minute feel the message to millions of people in less than, okay, either in a global, wide, global audience, 
in-person audience, or you preach a real good message in under five minutes to a worldwide internet audience, worldwide, in under five minutes. So we have to figure out who you look to as leadership in the black church. We would really want to, we would really want to believe and look up to the ministry of this young person. Or do we want to look up to the legacy that our leaders have left us behind from the civil rights movement of the 1950s, as well as what we have been fighting for, the rights and the liberties that we have been fighting for as a black community? Who do we go to for help? Who do we look to? And so you have to be very discerning, even if you are a young person in my, in my age, I'm in my mid-30s, when it's my 40s, who do I look to for help? Do I read the message? Do I read the, the words? Do I read the books of Martin Luther King and Michael Pax? Or do I, do I watch a 5, 10 minute, 20 minute uh, Instagram video, Instagram message, from Pastor Sergei Sorovitz or Stephen Furtick? Who do I believe? Who do I look up to? Well, in the published writings of the civil rights movement, which has been guiding us for years and years and years, those liberties and those fundamental rights are what has kept the black church and the black community sustained from prejudice, from segregation. Just the freedom right, the freedom fighters movement is what has been leading us towards delivering us from slavery and from segregation. Just in less than a couple of years from the 1950s, has has kept the black church and the black community what we are today. More than just a 20 or 30 minute message from somebody. We have been fighting for these rights. We have been fighting for our liberties. We have been fighting for our freedoms for a very long time. We have been fighting for our rights. At the same time, though, what we're going through right now is a transition of a new generation. So eventually, over in less than five years, we are going to be losing the legacy of our leaders. We're going to be losing Jesse Jackson in less than five years. We're going to be losing, okay, Reverend Al Sharpton in less, you know, um, unfortunately, in, in, in some years. We're going to be losing the legacy. And so as a young church, as young people, we have to figure out how do we look up to and how do we learn from the legacy that these people of faith, these people of power, of our parents who are also ministers, of our parents and our family members who are also bishops, evangelists, singers, ministers, pastors, how do we walk in the same shoes that our parents left behind? And our ministers left behind. And our leaders left behind. How do we look up to and fill those same shoes? What do we do? So when you look up to somebody that has an internet audience of over a million people, you have to be very discerning about that. Can they back up with what they're saying by real world reality issues? Are they just speaking about it on the internet or can they actually back it up in real life? I'm not just talking about backing up by a physical church. I'm actually talking about backing it up in real life, real issues. Can that person actually back up their ministry with what is going on around the world? And so that's a problem with a lot of black churches. Right now, the black community is hurting in, in a real, real world reality. The black community is hurting from the COVID-19 pandemic. The black community is hurting financially. The black community is hurting because the media industry, as well as our own community faith believers, are not teaching us in the way that we should go. So we have 20, 30 minute feel good messages, but in reality, we have to face the real world issues. How should we dress? Who do we live with? Where do we go? How do we look for a job? How do we look for a mate? What do we do? How do we, how do we go to a war? What about our family mem members who are serving overseas? What do we do when our families are deployed overseas? How do we take care of our, take care of our, our black hair? What do we do? How do we believe each other? How do we agree? Should we date a black man or should we date a white man? I mean, dating relations. How do we believe in each other? How do we grow up in this community where in 2021 existence, 2021 prejudice, America, prejudice and racism still exist very, very openly in America as of today. So how does a black church and a black community face those issues with racism, with prejudice, with low unemployment, 
a highly, highly, very educated millennial generation. This millennial generation is very highly educated, but right now we are still very much low employed. A high percentage of the black community is still in prison, in jail. And we are also dealing with issues faced by the Black Lives Matter movement. We're still dealing with police brutality against us, the black community. So when you deal with somebody like Stephen Furtick and Sarah Chase, you have to, like I said before, you have to be very careful as a young person as well as an older person. Can that person back up their ministry by real issues that's going on in the world? Are they addressing what's going on on TV? Are they addressing what's going on out in the community? Is this person talking about the Black Lives Matter movement? Is this person talking about racism? Is this person talking about voting rights? Is this person talking about where should we go? Is this person, person talking about how should I get a job? Is this person talk, is this ministry talking about COVID, the COVID pandemic? What is this ministry talking about? Because if you are a black church, you cannot ignore real world reality issues. And if that church is focusing on a really 20, 30 minute filled in message instead of Instead of when that when that when those members will leave the church, the members will leave the church in the same exact manner, in the same exact attitude, and the same exact spirit that they walked in the church to begin with. So they feel good with the Holy Spirit for about a good 10, 15 minutes, and they leave the church and go back to the depressive state of life. And you'd be surprised how many Christians of faith had a high percentage of suicide in the Christian church. But the Holy Spirit is given to us as a spirit of discernment and as a spirit of wisdom to deal with what does God tell me about my spirit-filled life versus what does God tell me about real-world reality issues. So you have to be very careful, very careful that that ministry, or even not just a Christian minister, a community leader, a community leader a community leader's mission, make sure that the community leader's mission is more than just a food pantry ministry, and that's it. Oh, I have a food pantry. I'm considered a Christian a, a community, a community mission, a community organization, just because I have a food pantry, not necessarily the case. I have a couple, a couple of people come to my, to my, to my meetings. I have a couple of people come to, um, to my messages. Great, that's great. But just you, because you have a food pantry ministry, it's not going to address the issues that your community is still dealing with. Especially here in Boston, you'd be surprised what goes on here in Boston as well as New York happens all around the world. You'd be surprised how much one activist, a one protest here in the city of Boston, can have impact and meaning all around the world in a different country. A person can go to a protest here in Boston, and then 24 hours later, they can be in Colombia, or 24 hours later, that person could be in London, preaching the same message that they have from that protest 24 hours later, and go to a completely different country in over 24 hours and caused a terrorist attack on the United States of America because they went to a protest here in the city of Austin. Or, in a positive matter, <laughs> a person can come to a protest here in the city of Austin 24 to 40 hours later, they can go to London, they can go to Paris, they can go to Germany, and they can actually speak into the United Nations. They can actually be speaking to worldwide world leaders about the issues that were addressed when they would set protests in the city of Boston. And so that person from that protest can be speaking to a country's leader, a country's president, and that president of the country can address the issues that were faced to all the people in that country because of one person making a difference in the city of Boston. Or because of the impact 
that was delivered from that meeting or that protest or that activist meeting delivered in one city just here in the United States. That person went to a different country or went to a completely different city and it changed the world in less than 24 hours. And that message spread like wildfire. So that person went here from Boston on Monday. Tuesday, they went to London. Wednesday, they went to Paris. Thursday, they went to Columbia. Friday, they went to Toronto. Saturday, they went to Germany. And all of a sudden, you have worldwide riots just from one message, which leads to a worldwide movement. You have to be very, very careful to have a spirit of discernment, which is, which is what is going on right now in the Christian church today. One person's internet media message can be addressed, can be all around the world in less than five minutes. And so that person traveling on a plane from city to city to city, which is what used to happen and then in the late 90s and even up until last year, people used to travel from city to city to city to city getting Christian, that's how their ministry was spread, from city to city to city. But now, instead of going from city to city delivering a message, all you have to do is have an internet ministry, go on the internet, have a millions and millions of subscribers and followers, and you can do the same thing on the internet that you did just, just last year. You save yourself time, energy, flight miles, <laughs> because you have a global, worldwide influence and presence just over the internet than you did before, with some time and energy, going from country to country to country, from city to city to city, just because of the impact of instant communication and access. Juanita Bynum, Paula White, especially with Juanita Bynum right now, she has been on day by day, hour by hour, uh, it's like she's, like she's on Facebook every single day. She's like, these feeds are crazy. When I need to buy them, it's like, probably this weekend, buy them. She's like, as well as Rodney Howard Brown in Tampa, Florida. They have, he's been going stop by stop by stop by stop by stop. He has not stopped making being on YouTube. I mean, for the past constant daily, 365 days. Okay, since the start of the pandemic, Pastor Rodney Haber Brown has been on YouTube for more than the past 300, 200 days. Okay, with his revival on YouTube, on his YouTube platform, with his revival in Tampa, Florida. He has had a revival in Florida for the past 200 days since the, since the middle of the COVID pandemic. Pastor Rodney Haber Brown has been going on a revival in Tampa, Florida for the past 200 days. <laughs> it's crazy, but his ministry is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and it's great. At the same time, though, God says, on the seventh day, please rest. <laughs> on the seventh day, God tells us to rest. <laughs> I love Pastor Ronnie Howard Brown, but God says rest, as well as to want you to buy him rest. I have people here in the city of Boston, like Monica Tahoon, as well as all these politicians, okay, that are waiting for re election. They need that constant, constant, constant in person community involvement. They need to be to be personally upfront and close and personal involved with community activism in person. You're a politician. I need to see your face. I need to see you face to face. I don't need to see you on the internet. I need to see you face to face because you are my constituent as well as you are what I need in order to get my place in office. So a lot of these politicians is great that they're on the internet, they're great they're on YouTube, it's great that they have uh, donation websites, that's great, but you're still a politician. You're running for office. You're running for the government of this land. 
We need the people. We need to see our leader up close and personal, rather than a minister or a person of God, a minister. Okay, we see a minister once or twice a week, but we need to see the politician on a day by day basis. So we know what's going on in our city. We know what's going on in our government. We know what's going on in our community. Hi. Oh, mask. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so imagine the impact that a politician has over a minister. Community impact. At the same time, imagine the community impact that a minister of God has over a politician. So it's kind of hard to balance the two and get the difference. But just think, that person, that influencer, how much power and how much control that influencer has over the whole entire United States government, just because of a couple words or a couple uh, minutes, a quick Instagram video, how much money that one young person can get over a politician or a media person or, or a, media, a media individual. It took them years and years and years to get up to this one stage in their life that a young person can get in less than five minutes just because of influence as well as popularity. Okay? So with this, a lot of this new millennial generation, okay, I'm speaking to you guys on YouTube, this is a lot has to do with popularity as well as influence. In the black community as well as in the young people in general. So it's kind of, kind of a little bit hard for us to balance the two. And I'm really worried. I'm really worried. You look at me really good in my face mask. <laughs> okay, so I really want to be very, 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 very careful. Okay? Because as a Christian, as I said in my first video response, as a Christian minister, you have to be very careful that every single message that you put out on the internet, that you speak to in public, is backed up by the Word of God. Because if that message is not backed up by the Word of God, anybody can take any kind of revelation or any kind of discernment from that message, either the same day or a couple days later or a couple weeks later, and take that message completely out of context and turn it over and turn it into something that was completely different from the, what that person or what that minister intended to say. Now, I'm F said, but by all means necessary. A lot of the black community, as well as the nation of Islam said, let's take our guns and fight. Was that Malcolm X's intention? Maybe. But the black community, what was going on during the 1950s and the 1960s and the 1970s, the civil rights movement, led them to believe in we need to protect and we need to defend our communities against the racist law of the land and the KKK and the government. And that message, by all means necessary, still carries on and still has influence and power, even then that 1950s, 1960s message of by all means necessary still carries over into right now into the year 2021. From young 13, 14, 15 year kids. So you have to be very careful as a minister that your words are backed up by the word of God as well as what's backed up to what the community, your community, is going through and struggling with in reality, what they're trying to face, face with in reality. Okay? <laughs> you have to back up your words by the word of God as well as what people are dealing with are, is the community dealing with students, uh, children not being able to communicate, not being able to talk? No. No. 
children right now, ages 5, 7, 8, 12 years old, 13 years old, have access to the internet. They're making YouTube videos. There's so many apps that right now children are not able to have an app play video games. Right now children as young as 7, even 12 years old, are now, as of this moment, able to go to college and get a PhD. <laughs> are now able to get a PhD, and they are 12 years old. So there is no problem with a young child being able to communicate just because of the access that the internet has provided to them, as well as the invention of knowledge. Right now, knowledge is, is passing so fast back and forth. It's not giving children a better way to communicate. It's giving children easier access to do what they want to do and to make a positive difference in the world. So it's not really about communication. It's about access. And she's a lot, so get my up. <laughs> OK. So it's more than communication, it's about access. And with access, you get better opportunities to money, to education, to involvement, to community resources, to change your family's lives just because of access. A, a way, a, a problem with communicating. Even children that are disabled, they really don't have a, a difficulty with communication. What they want is, I'm just going off the top of my head, what they want is a way to get the needs that they, that they want across. I'm hungry. What do I do? Can I get some milk? Where's the milk at? It's right there. I'm pointing to it. I'll give you some milk. Point to it. Okay. I want to go to the movies. Let's go to the movies. We're going to the movies. So yes, it does have to do with problem with communication, but right now, access is available to young children all around the world, as well as to access to feed on the Word of God and to teach people what the Word of God is saying. So as a minister of God, your job is to continue to pass on the ministry of faith, not just a couple of Good Bible verses, but you need to constantly be constantly feeding the Word of God into every single message in your Word and back up with your back up your message with Bible verses from the Word of God. So maybe some of the things might not apply to certain days or in her ministry. Some of the things don't. But at the same time, though, as a mega minister, if your words or your message are not backed up with the word of God, as well as to what people are facing in real world life situations, that is an issue. Because that's when it comes to politics and advertisers. So who is this minister really trying to appease to? Is it an advertiser or is it a politician, uh, a political involvement? Who doesn't have an issue with the black church? <laughs> Okay, all right, so I have, I have more to talk to, but again, when I was really, I'm 38 minutes into this message, but I was really, I know it's really long, but I really wanted to get the point across. This is a long message, I really want to get the point across. Make sure that that person's ministry is backed up by the Word of God, which has been long standing for thousands and thousands of years, rather than a one, two, or five year ministry from a young person. Or just advertisers and politicians. Because usually what happens in the mega ministry, what usually happens, especially on 39 minutes, is going to 40 minutes, especially what happened to TD Church Church, the Parsons Church in Dallas, Texas, a lot of people took words from his ministry, took the, took the spirit from his ministry. And they had conflict in the Potter's House Church in Dallas, Texas. And a lot of the members revoked from this church and say, we do not like this church. We do not like our ministry. We are going back to our home church, or we are going to start our own church. Which is what happened to the Potter's House Church in the, in the late 90s. So especially in the down home south, 
there was many other ministries. There's Ima, there's uh, Pastor Freddie Haynes, there is um, so many other churches around the deep down south, especially in South Dallas, okay, which is where the Potter's House Church is, that the Potter's House Church in South Dallas lost the majority of its members, and the majority of those members went to a completely different church and filled up the seats of that mega minister's church. So about 20 to 30 percent of the membership from the Potter's House was lost because of the conflict with the Potter's House in Dallas. So about a, couple, uh, a small percentage of those members went to a completely different church and fill up the ministry and fill up the seats of this one pastor because they saw division in this mega minister's message. Especially in South Dallas, you see these big churches down the street, street by street by street by street. You see one mega church, a couple blocks later, you see another mega church, a couple blocks later, maybe five, five, ten minute, eleven, a uh, fifteen minute church uh, car drive. You see another mega church. Another church across the city, maybe another 30 minute drive, you see another mega church. And you're wondering, how come there are so many big churches? You go into that church and you see over 10,000 seats, and guess what? The seats are empty because of division in the church. So, like, oh, let's go to this mega ministry's church. You see a 10, 50,000 seats in this big church, and they're empty. And that, that is pre predominantly what has happened, especially in South Dallas, Texas, right now. And the only way for ministers to get people into the seats is either with a person of influence or somebody that is hip, hop, fashionable, and looks good and looks presentable to the black community and makes the black community look good. It's a ministry look good to get them in there, to get more people in there, to get a good, feel good message. They get more, more community involvement, advertisers, uh, more, uh, it, more people in there into that church, as well as more local government involvement and to the activities of that ministry. And so one week later, they see a, a mega church that has 10,000 people as church service for a 10 o'clock church service. And a couple weeks later, it'll go back to the same thing. They will face down, face down. Or what usually happens when I was doing what I was doing, as well a lot of a lot of people, especially down south, they go from one minute church for a nine o'clock service, then they go to another minute church for eleven o'clock service, and then they go to another minute church for a one o'clock service. And they, they, they choose the pickets. <laughs> in South Dallas, it happens all the time, especially in South Dallas. So what am I trying to do? What is the purpose of my message? What, what am I trying to say? What am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is that in 43 minutes of this broadcast, make sure that that person's ministry is not just a phase down or a little down, but make sure that person's ministry is backed up by the word of God that has been long standing and long founding, and it's also dealing with real world issues that people are facing and dealing with today. Make sure that person, the very first thing that comes out of that person's message is the word of God. And if the first thing that comes out of that minister's message is not the word of God, you need to, as a Christian, as a believer in God, address that issue, address that person in that, on that platform and say, are you following in the footsteps of your father? Are you following in the footsteps of your ministry? What are you doing? Are you what are you doing and who are you? Because we need more than a feel good message. The very first thing that should come out of a person's mouth should be the word of God. 
because I mean this person has thousands and thousands of influence. And just imagine right now what the United States is dealing with is a is a conflict not just only against the Taliban, but against the Muslim community. And if the Taliban has influence over people around the world, imagine what influence they have to say the Taliban wants which is what the United States is dealing with, how does the Taliban treat young women and girls? And how do young women and girls respond to what the strict code of is in the Muslim community? So who has more impact? Is it the Muslim community and the Taliban? Who has more impact? It's the Muslim community. And right now in the United States, they have to carefully, carefully accept that we don't have any kind of division against the Muslim community. We just want safety and protection for our government and its citizens. Okay? So who has more influence? Is it a Christian minister or is it a Muslim community? Who has more influence now? As of August 25th, who has more influence? Is it the Muslim community or is it a Christian minister? And we have to be very, very careful, especially when our government has been going through wars and our government has been going through times of hard and trial. What we're dealing with, is this a religious war? Are we dealing with, is this a, a, um, a, generational war. What is going on in our economy? What is going on in the world? How do we face this issue? Is, is it religious or does it have to do with young people? What's going on? Okay. All right. So this will be about 46 minutes into this message. Thank you for listening to me. I'm going to share this on my Facebook as well as my Twitter as well as Pretty much, I just want to make sure it is across how much influence, though, okay, Sarah Jakes has over her community as well as over her fellowship. She has a lot of she has a lot of influence, yes, as well as the people underneath her, as well as her other influencers. Joel Olsey, Stephen Furtick. Um, I went to uh, this past Sunday, um, Hillsong Church a global, global church, a global church all around the world. But can ministers like these compete with the, compete with the influence and the power that the Taliban, not only the Taliban, but the Muslim community underneath them supports? So what can the United States government deal with? The Christian, Christian community, the Muslim community, or what is really going on? Okay, so I'm say in Boston they have the American Parole Association that came in here in Boston. So, <laughs> you know, I'm like, okay, okay, you know, guys, let's see. But anyway, what does the United States government deal with? Do we deal with the Christian community or do with, how do we deal with the, with the Muslim community? How do we balance the two? Because we have a war overseas, we need to send our resources, need to get our resources out, of this, out of this way. We also need to believe in the fundamental rights of Christian, of our Christian faith in our government, which is in God we trust. I know this is a big argument, but I still want it to get it across. Okay? And also, I just want to make sure that what Sarah J. Roberts is saying is actually backed up by the Word of God. And what the Word of God is, is in stone. I'm not necessarily saying that the Word of God is a fact. What I'm saying is, is that the Word of God has been given to us for years and years and years and years. And those same principles in the Word of God have not changed. No matter if we have been in a war, or we have been at peace, or we have been in conflict through Vietnam, through the Cold War, whatever our government has been, the Christian faith has had the same 
fundamental principles that have still kept us into what we have been today. No matter where you are in the world, the Christian principles remain the same. God is love. The Holy Spirit comes to fill us up. And we believe in the baptism of the faith. Those, those Christian values remain the same. There is a tree. The tree of God the Son, God the Father, and God the Holy Spirit. And you have to make sure, okay, different faiths is, is different. But so you have to make sure that a person backs up their message with what is in the Word of God. <laughs> okay, all right. So this is a quick battle about a first aid responding services. We're responding to Sarah Jake's message today on teaching children. Okay, I just want to make sure because children also know the Word of God. And right now you have to be teaching children the Word of God so that they will, when they grow older, they will not depart from His teachings. That's what God's Word says. So, anyway, this is a quick battle. I am poor. <laughs> So please send donations to my our nonprofit, Battle First Aid Responding Services, here in the Boston area. Cash at Venmo PayPal. Okay? Also, you can email me at BattleFirstAid at iCloud.com. God bless you and have a great, wonderful day. Bye.